If you haven't already signed up to fairfueluk.com, you should, because very quietly in the background over the last four years, we've saved the UK economy 30 billion pounds worth of needless fuel duty. We've stopped 13 P's worth of fuel escalator rises, and that has made a significant difference to what you pay at the pumps. If it hadn't been for fair fuels lobbying of the Chancellor, and the Prime Minister and all those MPs, diesel would now be 1.65 a litre and petrol 160. And trust me, there'd be no talk of a brightening economy. So we've had to have the help of lots and lots of MPs, and one of them has been particularly helpful right from the start, and that's Tessa Munt, the MP for Wells in Somerset. about 30, 35,000 miles a year. Um, and so it's absolutely madness not to use LPG. And it almost cuts your fuel bills in half, yes, doesn't it? Very, very nearly, it's just above half. If you, if you were a diesel, it'd be what, 133, 134, 73 a litre. Yes, absolutely. So it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And also the environmental credentials, it's 10% or 12% better in terms of CO2. Yes. And then with nitrous oxide in, in diesel, it's probably 200 times or less pollutant that's than right. diesel. Yes, it is. I mean, it, I, yeah, I think it's fantastic. And I've been using it now for about five, six, seven years, something like that. I had two cars. Um, the first one was a, a Vauxhall factory produced LPG vehicle. And then this lovely Peugeot that I've been driving around for the last two or three years, um, I actually had converted specially because I wanted it to be running on LPG. And it's not a particularly difficult thing to do. There's a garage just a short while away from here, a quarter of a mile away. Um, and they did the work for me, and it took, I don't know, a week and a half, a week. What did it cost to have the conversion? Gosh, I think it was about, it was about £600, I think. It's not expensive. So it's, it's paid for itself? Oh, crikey, time and time again. Yes, absolutely. So, OK, here's the obvious question, Tess, sorry to interrupt. Why isn't the government behind this? I don't know. I don't understand. Because, I mean, the thing I've learned relatively recently is that actually Vauxhall produce these vehicles um, and ship them out of Ellesmere Port to the European market. I mean, this is crazy. We and should be promoting this. There was a time when you could you could buy converted cars by people at Vauxhall, Ford, Volvo in the UK. Yes. And then the government took away a thing called the Power Shift Grant that allowed people to, to, to get conversions and, and have a portion of the cost paid for by the government. And they swept that away and, 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 and the popularity has fallen. This is something that you and I really, really think is important. Yes. It's better for the economy in terms of people can have their, their transport costs more affordable and better for the environment. So Absolutely. What's not to love? I know, I know, I know. And in rural areas, it's so important. I mean, I just put a bit of petrol into my car and then keep it full up with gas. You need petrol to start it, um, but it's a momentary thing. Um, but I just put a little bit of petrol in and then run it on gas. And for those people who don't understand, it's, it's a tank which will probably go underneath the boot. Uh, you've got a switch on the gas board so you can alternate between petrol and gas. I've had a, a, an LPG Jeep, they're, they're fantastic. There's no real change in, in, in the running quality. It's nippy. It's nippy. Yeah. And you might get a slight fall in fuel consumption, but at that sort of price, 73 yes. a litre, who cares? So it's a really, really sensible, sensible way of cutting your fuel bills. It is, and it's absolutely essential in rural areas. And you can get, you know, you can pick up LPG. There are apps. stations as well. Yes, yes, yes. So but there are apps that can tell you where your nearest one is. So, so again, here we go, back to this central issue. The, the government does not seem to, to grasp 
across these opportunities or even understand what's out there, what people like you, what your constituents want and need. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, I'm, I'm passionate about LPG. I will use it until, um, until we've got to the point where electric vehicles um, are more affordable and have got a longer distance. And I could have driven down here miles. to Somerset today yes. in my electric car, but it would have meant stopping at a service station yes. and having a 30 minute fast charge and then stopping on the way back, which is fine. Yes. But I do 100 miles in my electric car and it cost me two pounds. <laughs> And it's the, it, in the Wilson household, this is the car we use every single of day. Of course! We take the children to school, we go shopping, Absolutely. and it's great. And it's a little tiny Citroen C0, and you can buy them now secondhand for about 8,000 quid. But 100 miles, two quid. Yes, Again, it's a fantastic feeling. Yes. And the, the UK, and, and you live down some really, really good at this, the UK should be the centre of green technology. Absolutely. Absolutely, and we should do everything we can to promote. I think half of the trouble is that people don't even know these really exist. Um, and, you know, to, to convert a Peugeot for that little money, and it runs, and I've never really had a problem with it. You know, not a, you know, the old windscreen washer drops off, but nothing to do with the engine. It's brilliant. Yes, yeah, that's right. But that is just such an amazing thing. No, it is. It is. I know if people knew, if people knew... That why would the government not promote this? I don't, I don't understand because it's so inexpensive, you know, 73.9 in Can't comparison you with... Lisa, UK LPG, yep. a supporter of Fair Fuel UK, why? Mainly because we feel that fuel duty is a major issue for the ordinary motorist. We believe that by cutting uh, fuel duty it gives us an opportunity to push our argument for greener incentives to help gaseous fuels generally, but also specifically for liquefied petroleum gas. And the public really don't understand about LPG, do they? I, I, I've run LPG cars really successfully, and the, the reduction in cost is massive, less than almost half the cost of diesel. The, the nitrous oxide emissions, 200 times less than diesel, and 10 to 12% less than, than CO, CO2. So you know, there really is nothing there to, to, to say, why don't we adopt this much, much more widely in the UK? I think if I'm honest, the industry has tended to sort of hide its light under a bushel a little bit for far too long and as a result we really need to step up awareness, making people aware about how easy it is to get, that there's 1400 publicly available sites they can, they can fill up, that there are over 170 approved installers, approved converters around the country where they can get their car retrofitted, they're trusted and there's a full customer experience. And let me just, just double check, it's 73p a litre? Yes, on average, as of today. Compared yes. to 134 for diesel over there, yeah. and the cost to convert a smallish car is about 1,200, 1,500 yeah. pounds. Yeah. So the payback, if you're doing a reasonable mileage every year, is pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, in terms of if you're doing about 20,000 miles a year, I mean, you'll save you'll actually get to a point where even within a year you'll actually be saving three, four hundred pounds annually. And what people don't know is that you can also go out and buy a dual fuel car. I mean, they are out there, second-hand ones that have already yes. been converted or that were dual fuel cars from the factory are out there. And if you just put that into Google, you can, you can find them. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously we have links on our website, which is drive.co.uk, where they can find out about where to get their car converted or equally where they can find out where to buy a second-hand one or go to auction, etc. Now, people will be saying, well, this sounds far, far too good to be true. I didn't know that there's a fuel out there that's available in regular petrol stations that's almost half the price of, of diesel. What are the downsides? Um, well, obviously, it is a dual fuel car, so you will still keep your petrol tank. So, obviously, one of the things that we tend to do is the tank tends to be fitted in the spare wheel well, so potentially you'll lose your spare tyre, but in this sort of modern age, most people carry the cans that just pre-inflate them. Generally, there isn't a downside. It's just, as I said, we need to spread the word a little bit stronger and a little bit wider than perhaps we've done to date. The only thing I can report, having done 40,000 miles in LPG cars, is that yes, you have your switch on the dashboard, so you never, never are without petrol. You can't convert diesel cars, can you? It's quite difficult and expensive. It is, and, and as an industry, we don't recommend yeah. it. Um, 
Sometimes when it's cold, you get a chuntering, don't you? Um, yeah, I mean, a, a vehicle will start on petrol when it's fuel fuel, and the reason we do that is because we're in a colder climate. Um, so the spark ignition will start on petrol and then it will convert to LPG. I mean, the, the technology has moved on a lot as well, so it's now automatic. It's all computerised, so yes, you can manually override the system, but it'll also automatically switch to LPG and then it'll transition back to petrol if you run out of LPG, and it does it all seamlessly without you being aware of it. Uh, generally, there's very little change in performance. Obviously, your miles no, per gallon is... Slightly less, but then at 70, less. 73p, exactly. uh, who, is, who is bothered? Also, perhaps people find... The, the, the nozzle and, and the temperature of it, the, the coldness, a bit off-putting, but you get used to it. Yeah, and we're aware that that's, it's not, or it doesn't appear quite as convenient as just putting your no. diesel nozzle in. And what we have done, and our members have certainly done this, is looked at trying to make that as easy as possible. Uh, done videos, there's YouTube you can go on, just so that you can see how it is done. And it's just a puff at the end, which is what concerns people. What really gets me cross is that there was a time when you had Ford, you had Volvo, you had Vauxhall, you had people like um, Deu, all making dual fuel cars that you could buy here in the UK in showrooms. Yeah. They still make those cars, but they export them abroad. They do, yeah. Because the industry hasn't been given the long-term security from the government to say, this is the future of LPG. What do you think should change? I mean. Obviously, the autumn statement, they gave us a 10-year trajectory for gaseous fuels, which we hugely welcome. Um, but one of the things that we didn't do is if we'd known that 10 years ago, rather than the rolling three years that we're consistently given, I think the industry would be in a very different place. Because time and time again, we used to get responses from consumers saying, government are going to do it as soon as LPG gets popular, we'll do what they did with diesel, and suddenly overnight, prices will rocket and it won't be advantageous to do it anymore. So we now have a 10-year strategy from the government. Yes. We have 1,400 LPG stations. The technology is proven. You might not be able to go on the channel tunnel with it, but hey, go on the ferry instead. And, and from someone who's done, as I say, 40,000 miles in it, it really is an environmentally and financially beneficial future fuel for consumers out there. We just have to get the message across, don't we? Absolutely, we do. And, and we as an industry are trying to do that. We're about to launch a full industry blueprint on what we as the industry want to do and are asked for the support we require from government. You know, very small, easy things like asking government to add LPG vehicles to their procurement list. You know, very straightforward, very easily done, doesn't cost them anything. To, you know, helping join campaigns such as Fair Fuel, um, to also talking and upping our uh, messages to consumers as well. My job is to make transport for the UK as clean and as affordable as possible. So as far as I'm concerned, LPG is one of those future solutions that consumers need to A, be more aware of, and that the government, B, needs to push much, much harder. Absolutely, and with air quality being an increasing political issue, I mean, LPG really does stack up on an air quality. It's not just got a CO2 benefit, it's hugely beneficial when it comes to NOx and particulate emissions. 200 which... times Absolutely. less nitrous oxide. And that's before you even talk about PM10s. Exactly. And that's a big deal and I think it's a growing issue and therefore we will be campaigning to raise LPG on that under that banner.